Let's get back into trade deadline day with PTI NBA insider, our dear friend Brian Windhorst. Let's start with this. Heading into the deadline, there was a lot of speculation about what the 76ers could do. They got a couple of pieces. They didn't get anything huge. Does that franchise feel that they're good enough right now, Brian? You know, it's, they're in a rough spot because on one hand, they are 22-2 and two at home. And they have had top teams come in there for months, and they have pounded them. They are a losing team on the road, and you watch them play, and they're clearly mismatched. I mean, you don't have to be a basketball expert to see that they are mismatched. But they have played well. They just didn't have much firepower in this, in this market. They, they, they weren't going to trade any of their top five guys. They don't really have any first-round picks to trade because they've they made a Jimmy Butler and Tobias Harris trade over the last couple of years. They just have a bunch of seconds, and that's what they got. I mean, they added a couple guys to their bench. It wasn't nothing, but they didn't have much to trade. Well, let's look at the Clippers for a second. They wind up getting Marcus Morris. And, Brian, why is it that the Clippers feel they need Marcus Morris? It's not like he's been a front-line guy or somebody who's made a big difference in playoffs previously. Well, two reasons. One, because they, lo- they want another guy with experience who's tough-minded. Two, the Lakers wanted him. And <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the NBA that we are in right now, it is an L.A. versus L.A. battle. We saw it for Kawhi. We saw it today for Marcus Morris. We're going to see it over the rest of this month for buyout guys, even if we're talking about guys who will never play. And we're going to see it probably in the spring when they play in the playoffs. I'm going to tell you something. Before we talk about Marcus, I was kind of stunned this trade happened today because Steve Ballmer and Jim Dolan are suing each other. And so one of the things I thought was a kind of a quiet thing no one was talking about is maybe when you're trying to choose between the Lakers and Clippers offer, you would think about, I'm going to go with a team that's not suing me. But um, apparently they got over that. They did get a a nice package. And the, the thing about it is when the Lakers did the deal for Anthony Davis, they just emptied out their cupboard. And when the Clippers did their deal for Paul George, even though it was a lot, they just had more there. And that just, they're not going to be able to overcome that in the short term. I don't know if Marcus Morris chips the balance of of power, but the Clippers got better today and the Lakers had not not yet. Thank you for bringing up the Lakers because that's the next question. They did not make a move, though our friend Mark Stein says that the team is expected to try out J.R. Smith, who is at least 50 years old at the moment. (laughs) Is this a good thing? What are we looking at here? Well... I mean, if we get JR from 2016, it would be a tremendous move. And look, we're getting Dwight Howard from like 2012. So whatever pixie dust they have, if they've got some more in the can, try it. Um, JR hasn't played since November of 2018. Uh, I mean, and he, the the year and a half before that, he was not good. This will be his last opportunity in the league, probably. He does keep himself in good shape, he can get hot. The thing is, they don't have a roster spot, so he's, he's going to have to be good enough in this workout for them to cut a player to bring him on. But, Jr., I love you. Best of luck. <laughs> Tony, I thought we'd see Jr. Smith playing golf with you before we saw him <laughs> yeah. in the NBA uniform again, so he's got to get off the golf course. Uh, Brian, the Pistons send Andre Drummond, Drummond, a two-time All-Star, in the division to Cleveland, a non-factor if there ever is one, why is there no interest? Are, are big men just extinct now that Andre Drummond, a guy leading the league in rebounding currently, can go almost unwanted? Well, we just saw Dwayne Dedman get traded to the Hawks yesterday with two first-round picks because the Kings wanted rid of him. We saw the, the, the Rockets say, we don't even need a center. Do you want Clint Capella? Atlanta, take him. We don't even want him. Um, you know, Andre Drummond had next to no value. The, 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 you know, they gave away two t- contracts that are expiring. The players are not relevant. And the draft pick they gave in this trade is the lesser of two picks that the Cavs have in 2023. This is essentially the, back, the, 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 the bucket of balls. Uh, this is airfare. This is bus fare from Detroit to Cleveland. Andre was very upset about it. Um, you know, uh, the thing about it is, if you look at the way the league is right now, you look at Philadelphia, Philadelphia is having trouble because they've got the best center in the league who's blocking space in the middle. With this, this is potentially just the era we're in. I believe it will swing back at some point, but my hair could be totally gray by the time that happens. <laughs> but at least you'll have hair. Wilbon and I don't have any hair. We'll get Fair you point. out of here on this. And, and there's a great big man in, in, in Milwaukee who puts up great numbers, and they win almost all the time. Wilbon over here is not sold on the Bucks. Are you? 
There's no reason for me not to be. They're great on offense. They're great on defense. They don't play their players that many minutes. One of the things that no one's talking about is that Giannis is putting up incredible numbers, playing fewer minutes at any time in his career. Everything about them says they are a championship team. But I'm in the, the Heat locker room last night after the game here in L.A., and the Heat are excited because they've just traded for Andre Iguodala, and they think they can beat the Bucs. And I have felt that sentiment elsewhere. I think the Celtics believe it. I think the Raptors believe it. The Sixers, who are playing the Bucs tonight in an interesting game, to say the least, have beaten the Bucs. They feel good about it. Nobody scares them, Tony. Or, you know, they don't scare anybody, I should say. They don't scare me. But I admit, I don't have a great reason why, other than it doesn't feel like a scary team. I probably should feel fear them, though. Brian, thank you so much for being with us. Thanks, Always Brian. Appreciate, appreciate it. it. Fear the deer. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For highlights and analysis, check out the ESPN app. And for live streaming and premium content, check out ESPN+.